We're going to do something different. This is for Richard. He wanted to, uh, he wanted me to give a little assistance with one point and one nunchuck. So what I want to talk about with using a point and nunchuck is you have different dynamics. I personally love a huge poi, which is very rarely used. Uh, <laughs> but I like a huge poi because of the dynamics it creates between big and small. It's just kind of ridiculous. But at the same time, I can always wrap if I need to create something a little tighter. What we're going to do is we're going to have the we're going to have the chuck and the poi about the same length. You don't need to have a super long one. It's just a really long poi eventually will set you up to do like really cool moves like rope dart kind of elbow pulls. When you have a long poi, you can like do really cool rope dart style moves, and that's that's really fun for me. I like being able to actually add in another element to poi. And then I just wrap it to keep it shorter. Um, planes are a big deal. A lot of times people talk about 3D spinning, which is really cool for technicality wise. But when you, especially when you do poi, if you're not straight, it's gonna look, it's gonna feel a little bit different. Like it's gonna feel a little bit different. This is gonna look a little bit different if I go like, how am I even trying to do it? If I do this compared to this. So the first thing to think about is, is how can you keep it straight? I mean, usually the way I see it is, you have this very flat wall that's in front of you. It's almost like if you were to spin in a hallway, like if there was a wall here and a wall here, how can you keep it as flat as you can? But this isn't always the case. A lot of poise spinners do something called 3D poise spinning. There's all different kinds of things we can talk about later. But to start with, it might be good to, to make sure you stay as flat as you can when you're doing your spins. Uh, the one thing I wanted to talk about today with the pointed nunchuck is a very simple concept, but it gets fairly complicated. There's a lot of work to do for the simple concept. And it's taking a 3 beat weave and it's breaking it down into quadrants. So we're doing a 3 beat weave. This is your prerequisite. If you can't do a 3 beat weave, you won't be able to do this move. Once you get your 3 beat weave, we're gonna start bringing it into our quadrants right here. And back up to the 3 beat weave. Now, how do you do that? That's a good question. I'm glad you asked, because I know you were asking. Here's how you do it. Go like this, and then go like this. The end. <laughs> yeah, I know. I have a little quirky sense of humor today. It's horrible. Uh, and you think of your 3B weave, what you're gonna start doing is you're gonna start practicing pulling it in to various parts. Let me show you the end product. As you do your 3B weave, all of a sudden you're gonna realize that you can pull it any direction and pull it out to your reverse. Oops. <laughs> and pull it back in. And all of a sudden we have all this extra motion that we can do. And it's all just three weeks that we've started to pull through our body. It gets more complicated. I mean, you can start doing like crazy stuff like. Oops. <laughs> you can do all kinds of crazy stuff with this. But to begin with, to begin with, we're gonna start with the very simple one. We're gonna do a 3 weave, and with one hand, well, it can be the chuck or the poi, as you're doing your slash, you're gonna start pulling it in. So one at a time, we're gonna pull this in. So first, let's start with my right hand, and it's gonna go up by my neck, like this. It's gonna kinda look like I'm choking myself. I'm actually spinning it as close as I can behind, behind my head right here. Uh, it's kind of a dangerous move, so it might be better to do the poi. I'm just gonna do the chuck for now, but. If you find yourself hitting yourself, give it an upward motion up and down like this. This will straighten out your plane a little bit. So if you're going here and you keep clipping yourself a little bit, maybe on the shoulder or the back of the head, give it an upward up and down spin and try to imagine or even stand next to a wall and see if you can flatten it out. So one circle in the front, one circle in the back. So start working this, do your three beat, and then just hold this and just see if you can spin it by your neck. Now this is going to turn it into a 2 beat basically. There's no 3 beat anymore. This is really where it comes from, right? This is essentially uh, a great way to bridge from the 3 beat, bring it into your body and shoot it back out. Now your other hand is going to do the exact same thing except for by your hip. So we're doing this 3 beat. Do you notice too I'm not standing this way? Because if I sit this way, there's no way I can pull it to my shoulder. This is another reason why I'm talking 
about planes is important, because if you don't have the right planes, you won't actually be able to pull this move off very easily. No matter what happens, if I'm, not, if I'm standing here, my shoulder's not even facing, it's in the completely opposite perpendicular angle, so there's no way I can pull it in. If I stand over here, I can totally pull it in. So here's what happens. We do the three V, we pull this up by our neck. This one's gonna go by our waist now, so do the three V. And then you're gonna pull this down by your waist. I know I'm going over this very fast it's because there's a lot of material. This is going to be a long video, but your three beat with your hand, you can pull it here. And then as it goes across, it's going to go behind you and in front of you, behind you and in front of you. Try to get it as flat as you can behind you and in front of you like this. You're going to do the same thing with this one. You're doing your two beat right now, and then you're going to do the hip reel like so. I think you already know how to do a hip reel, but if you're not sure, remember every time it's about six o'clock, you're pulling up. It's kind, of a, it's kind of a funny wrist thing that happens. If you can't get it behind you or if you're hitting yourself in the back, think of bending your wrist backwards and pulling up. So here, bend your wrist backwards and pull it up. Okay, we're trying to get it to cross as flat as we can from back here to over here. Now, you don't actually pull it up. I'm just giving this upward pull to give you an idea for how to control it when it's behind you, because this is kind of an awkward, awkward position to get control over. So like this and like this. So that's your first step, Richard. Your first step is gonna be this. Go to your 3B, do that. Put it down, see if you can do this. Good, if you can do this, then see if you can do this. And then see if you can do it all at the same time. The nice thing is the 3B will give you the timing you need. Just keep in flow with it, like this. If you don't know your timing, one thing you can always think of is if, if you move your hips, your hips will actually coordinate the timing very well. For instance, you see how my hips are coordinating the timing? Uh, as I pull my shoulders and my hips together, it kind of pulls the chucks and, or the poi or whatever on its own. So you can always fill it out by just a slight tilt of your hips, even if you're over here, I can still just feel it, like I could barely even move my hands, and most of it would just be the motion of, of how my body would move. One's leading and the other's just kind of following back and forth, like a wave. So try that, there's tons of variations that you can get from there. And then, Last but not least, let's give, let's give a staff. Let's give a staff one. Let's go with uh, kind of a simple motion that's gonna be very, very helpful in the future. All right, here's what you're gonna do. You're gonna hold the staff with your thumb pointed outward. You're gonna hold it in the center and you put it by your hip and you are going to try to draw the biggest circle you can with your thumb. So imagine in front of you is a wall and this is a crayon and you're trying to draw the biggest circle you can, okay? So here. Now here's the thing, as soon as you can get this down, and it's not too hard and it doesn't look that cool, but it gets really fun soon. As soon as you can get that, the moment you are at nine o'clock over here, or three o'clock I suppose, depending on what you're thinking or what you're seeing, as soon as you go to the outside, you're gonna pull this up 90 degrees, bam. So from your hip, all you're gonna do is keep it very straight and you're gonna pull it by your shoulder. And you're gonna try the same thing, but you're, gonna, you're not gonna have your hand out here though. You're gonna have your hand kind of by your neck and you're gonna try to draw the biggest circle you can without hitting your face. Now, if it crashes into your face, eh, you know, that's no good. You may have to move your hand forward just a little bit and backward, just a little bit to clear your head like this. Now, once again, once we get to nine o'clock, or three o'clock, depending on which angle you're looking at. Basically, once it's on the opposite end of, of where it was on the op opposite end, on the, uh, when we're going upwards, we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna kinda turn, we're gonna put it down by our hip, and we're gonna go down. This is a very, this is actually not an intermediate move. This is a fairly simple move, broken down quite well. Outside, up, spin it. Try to get the feel, the, the one by your head's gonna be harder. So you may have to move your hand forward and backwards just a little bit, just so it doesn't crack you in the head if you keep it straight, like, bonk. Oh, oh my God, I hate stuff. 
Um, so move it forward and backwards as soon as you get to the inside or the opposite end where it was, pull it down. See now if you can do it faster. And what I mean by that is once it goes to the outside, pull it up. Once it goes to the inside, pull it down. Up, down. And then what you have is basically a figure eight that you've broken into your quadrants. Hey, we're doing quadrants again. Do you remember I just did that with Boy? Yeah, now we're doing it with this staff and it looks like this. There's a lot of places where you can go with this, but that's just the basic gist of it. Yes, you can do it with both sides. You can do it with the other side where you have here, because of the outside down, and I kind of go fast, just because you kind of just mirror what I just did on the other end. And all of a sudden you have, now you have both directions. Boom, 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 boom. Where did it go? It's the magic. Ta-da! Okay, here. And you can do a pinwheel pass behind your head to go to the other side. Now, of course, you'd have to do a pinwheel pass on the other opposite end. You'd do a low pinwheel pass to bring it back. Man, did I just stack all that together really fast? I did. But that's because you just have to know this technique first. This technique, do this technique, and then just remember, you can use pinwheel passes to move between them. So learn this first. One beats is what they're called in the quadrant zone. Do this and then use your pinwheels, uh, use the pinwheel passes to get through it. Like I said, this is not the easiest class today. I deliberately did not make it easy. I kind of wanted to give you a little bit of a challenge as well as some new stuff to work on. I need to go. I'm going to be late. I know I want to get this out by seven. See you later, kids.